Hey guys, so I've been doing this whole video thing for like quite a while now, over a year now, a year and a half maybe? Ugh, jeez, feels old. Uh, but I get a lot of comments on my videos, a lot of really positive things people say to me, things like, uh, you wasted nine minutes of my life, uh, Eric, you're a fucking loser, who gives a shit about what you have to say, asshole, uh, ha ha ha. Seriously, punch yourself in the face, you're not funny, and I'm pretty positive no one likes you, just saying. You know, really positive, like, uplifting messages like that. I got a, a, a bit of a fan base. Uh, and anyway, sometimes people will say, hey, they'll email me or hit me up on Steam or something, and they'll say, hey, Eric, there's this game, you, sh you should give your opinion of it. And I'm like, well, I I'd love to, but I don't have that game. And, then, and usually that's like the end of the conversation. Not this time! I said that and someone was like, well here you go! So they gave me a game! And I was like, ooh, ah, now I gotta review it. Ah, uh, that sucks. Now I gotta like, not procrastinate and skip a week because I just wanna sleep in on a Saturday. So anyways, uh, the game in question happens to be this one. It's, uh, Records of, uh, Agrest War. Z, Or is it? No, just War. Just, not... Just the singular. Uh, it's a JRPG kind of thing. It's not my normal bag, but someone gave it to me, so I was kind of obliged to, to do the review since they, they, went, they took the trouble of giving me a video game. So anyways, here's my opinion of Records of Agress War. Records of Agress War, or however the hell you're supposed to pronounce it, is a tactical Japanese RPG. The fighting is all turn-based. You have a bunch of little dudes that stand there and they each have the attack and they can attack one at a time and, you know, all that stuff, all that traditional sort of tactical turn-based RPG goodness. You start out playing the character Lionheart, who's like royalty or something and then like doesn't want to kill elves so he gets kicked out and now has to find a bracelet and all kinds of weird stuff. It's traditional, you know, Japanese storytelling stuff. Essentially, you're the good guy and you're off to collect a party of dudes to go out and fight some evil dude that is doing evil things. For most of the game, you're following the map and going down some sort of path to reach your very obvious goal, but there is the occasional spot where you enter in a dungeon and you can run around looking for loot and getting into all those awesome random dungeon encounters. The game comes with everything that you would expect. It has, you know, party members, it has levels, and experience points, and gold, which you can use to buy better weapons, and you upgrade your weapons, and all that traditional stuff. And because I don't play a lot of these types of games, uh, to me it seems like the battle system is actually pretty complex. There's a lot of ins and outs, and it slowly introduces you to them as you play. It introduces new ideas, so, so you're not overwhelmed at the beginning. One of the things that struck me as kind of unique is that the game, for what it is, isn't as linear as you would think. While most of the time you're following a bunch of dots on the map and going a very straight path, occasionally you do get to choose which path you get to take in order to get to your final goal. Sometimes you get the choice, do you want to go through this fort, which could be kind of hard, or do you want to go around it, which will just take longer and means more battles? And based on these choices, your alignment either goes more to the light side or more to the dark side. Kind of good, evil, but not quite. These choices also influence how much certain party members like you or dislike you. Now you might be asking yourself, why the hell do I care if my party members like me or don't? The storyline of this game does not fit into the lifespan of our plucky hero. The story of the game takes place over five generations, and because your character is not immortal, he needs some sons to continue on his path. Which is why there are three women every generation which you're trying to impress, because eventually you're supposed to marry and make babies with. That's right, in the mix of all this tactical RPG, you know, goodness, is a dating sim. Alongside your quest for vengeance or power or whatever the hell the story's about, you're also on a quest to get some. And choosing your wife is more than just, you know, picking whichever anime lady titillates you the most. The spouse you choose actually affects the stats of your offspring and can also influence the ending of the game. The whole getting married and making babies part of the game really highlights the sort of strange aspects of the game. This game has a lot of just, like, anime TNA. If you're a big fan of sort of an pretty anime girls and stuff and bending over and compromising positions all the time, it, this is probably a game you're going to enjoy. There's a lot of that stuff in there. What the f***? But despite all that sort of stuff that I hate, the anime TNA stuff that I, I can't stand most of the time, the fighting's great. 
it's tactical, it's great, it's turn-based, which really isn't my thing. This this game overall isn't my thing, but it's got a lot of really great elements in it that if you're a big fan of these types of games, you will probably enjoy. And there you have it. Uh, Records of Agoras Wars uh, is interesting. I mean, I, it's not my thing. I'm, I'm not into the... the uh, Japanese uh, games for the most part, especially like the slow tactical game, but it is fun. I mean, I, I can see why people would actually want to, to play this game because there's a lot of tactical stuff involved, kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics. It's turn-based and you got a big party of dudes and you fight other dudes and there's a lot of dude fighting and, and there's a bunch of different ins and outs. It's very complicated and if you just skip past all the tutorials, you're you're not, you really kind of feel left out when you're like, wait, how did he do all that stuff? That, uh, but it, it's fun, it's got a lot of stuff. There's, there's some interesting choices, it's not as linear as, as you would expect, and, and interesting, and it's got a weird dating sim in the middle of it, uh, which is which is interesting, but uh, overall, it's, it's interesting. Not for me, certainly, but if you're looking for uh, a, if you're into like JRPGs, and, and you're looking for a nice budget title that's going to take hours out of your life, then certainly this game is, is well worth checking out.